Take Jean back to the car. I must get... Sir, this is Colonel Strigger. How do you know, sir? A shattering business, Colonel. The Prime Minister's already at Chequers. We'll be there in 30 minutes. We've been in constant communication with Paris, Moscow and Bonn during your visits. I think the British government's approval will be a formality. The evidence is absolutely conclusive. If I might just... Sure. Colonel. It may speed things up. The clincher is at the back. It's an enlarged single frame from the cine film, sir. It couldn't possibly be a fake. The film was found undeveloped still in the camera. It's genuine. Take my word for it. Keep pace with the escort. Take the file, sir. Good to see you. Well, how are they treating you, sir? Fine, fine. Sit down. Look, I'm sorry to foul you up like this. It's all right, sir. 
Apparently, I'm stuck in this chair for another couple of months. Now, things are happening, Ed. A lot of it's going to fall on your shoulders. The Special Committee of the United Nations meets day after tomorrow. We get the go, no go decision then. And you want me to be there? Now, who else? Would you turn around, Colonel? Ah, Colonel Straker. Gentlemen. Please sit down. Thank you. First of all, I should like to apologize on behalf of General Henderson for his absence. As you probably know, he's still recovering from injuries he received in the car crash. Thank you, Colonel. No doubt you will make an excellent substitute. Now, gentlemen, I suggest the best way for us to proceed is by a process of question and answer. Colonel, as representative of our respective governments, we are being asked to approve the largest financial appropriation ever envisaged for an international project. Two questions. Is the project, the whole project, absolutely necessary? And if it is, are we getting value for money? I believe the setting up of shadow is not only necessary, but absolutely vital. Every day we just sit about and talk about it, the potential danger increases. As to your second question, I believe this breakdown of expenditure might be helpful. Fleet of submarines, base on the moon, satellites. If I might point out, sir, we're confronted with alien spacecraft, possibly from another solar system. Maybe the General and Colonel Straker have been reading too much science fiction. The Earth is faced with a power threat from an extraterrestrial source. We've moved into an age when science fiction has become fact. We need to defend ourselves. And how long will it take to set up this defense organization? We estimate seven to ten years. Ten years? But, but you say, Colonel, the danger is imminent. Yes, sir, that's true. But the type of organization we need can't be set up overnight. All I say is that any delay only increases the danger. The estimate for security is astronomical. It's a vital aspect. Everything seems vital. How is Shadow to be organized um, regarding personnel, hmm? On strictly military lines. We hope to recruit the best people available. Internationally? Yes. And who will command this international band of heroes? My government has stipulated the commander-in-chief must be an American. Oh, yes, yes, we know. As the nation being asked to dig a little deeper into its pocket. Naturally, naturally. Gentlemen, gentlemen. We asked Colonel Straker here to answer our questions. I suggest we let him do so. Well, there's no question in my mind, gentlemen. There's only one man for the job, General Henderson. He's the obvious choice. Any further questions? Thank you, Colonel Straker. Monsieur Duval, I understand you have three daughters. Yes. Yeah. I pray that you never find yourself looking down at one of their mutilated bodies. I hope that the next UFO incident is not in your hometown. Thank you for your time.
Well, gentlemen, it has been approved unanimously. <laughs> You've done a great job, Ed. Well, I thought I'd screwed it up, sir. I was only in there about 10 minutes. Well, all you've got to do now is work 16 hours a day for the next 10 years. Sure. Oh, uh, there is another thing I had to tell you. They appointed the Commander-in-Chief. Who? You. Me? Again, it was unanimous. Uh, it seems the French delegate, Duval, was particularly insistent. But, sir, why... Why not choose me? Oh, come on, let's not kid ourselves, Colonel. What sort of shape am I in? What sort of shape would I be in in 10 years' time? Oh, nonsense, General. Well, in a couple of months, you'll be out of that thing, up and about, as fit as ever. You can always refuse. But if you do, it's got to be now. There'll be no turning back later. Send the right in. Well, gentlemen, nice to see you. How are you, General? Fine, fine. Oh, this is our first recruit, Alec Freeman. Glad to know you, Freeman. Welcome to Shadow. Thank you, sir. I've uh, glanced through your record. Combat pilot and Air Force intelligence. That's the sort of background we need. Well, Ed, how do you like the office? Oh. Looks very nice. I've been kicked up here to keep a fatherly eye on you. I'll be holding the purse strings. Well, that sounds like it could be a lot of fun. <laughs> How is the uh, building program coming on? Oh, fine, fine. Sit down, Freeman. The studio may be worth a visit in a couple of months. From the plans, I'd say it's quite a construction job. Yes, it is. But I still think the main problem is finding the men to man it. Well, we're working on it. Right, gentlemen. Now, let's get down to business. This could be a very late night. Block's nearly finished. Yes. What'll happen to it then? Oh, it'll be used. When it's finished, uh, government department's moving in. Income tax, probably. All that for the sake of security? Hmm. How else can you cover up the excavating of a couple of million cubic feet of earth? I hear they're installing a voice print identification mechanism. Yes, I tried out the prototype last week. It identified me as a female technician from Dublin. They said it was only a teething problem. Well, they could be right. Come to think of it, you do look like one. A female well, technician, technician from, from Dublin. Dublin. <laughs> nice to see you smile again, Ed. center of the whole organization. You know, Alex, setting all this up, the delays, the problems, security, personnel, a thousand details, a hundred holdups. Sometimes seems like we're fighting a ten-headed monster. And what drives you on? Fighting the monster? I don't know. Something inside me, I guess. 
It's called dedication. Pig-headedness would be nearer. Well, the control complex is complete. Fully operational. All we need now are the technicians. How are the first batch of recruits making out? Oh, security checks, aptitude tests, six month training and then further tests. It's a pretty tough schedule. The original 50 have been whittled down to eight. Eight? Yes. Second batch seem to be doing a little better. Well, when can we expect the first group to finish their training? Oh, a few months. It'll be spring. Good time to start. My place. Well, it's been a long, hard slog, but we're ready. ready. I know how hard you've all worked. I think we can assume that the worst is over. And I want to thank you all. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank Messages. Information. Q21 answer negative. Q46 satellite link effective. Q9700. The computer readouts available from today. Have them put straight through to me, will you? Yes, sir. Mr. Freeman to see you, sir. All right, Mr. Freeman. But the girl in reception calls me Alec. So? 
Well, doesn't that inflame you with jealousy? Obviously, it doesn't. Voice print, positive identification, 97. Freeman, Alec E. Tests. All of them. I bet. Keep you a moment, Alec. Trouble? Oh, why else would I send for you? Take a look at this. That's Westbrook Electronics, isn't it? Yeah. What's left of it? Well, what happened? For ten years, there have been setbacks. We've had uh, accidents miscalculations, errors of judgment, and other mishaps. Let's put Westbrook Electronics down to other mishaps. You mean a UFO? Well, there's no proof. So bang goes the Utronic project. Just when we thought we really had something to track them down. Now, don't panic, Alec. The Utronic equipment is safe. It wasn't in the building. It's intact, fully tested, and ready for shipment. The breakthrough. Shadow have had Moonbase and the other satellites operational for the past few months. There have been a few UFO sightings, but no interceptions. We've got the teeth. Soon we'll have the eyes. Now, Freeman, you know how important this is to our whole organization. Now, the Utronic design team and the equipment are ready to be picked up in Los Angeles and flown here to England. Now, I'm making you responsible for the security of the entire operation. I mean you, personally. Right. Well, it must be quite a while since you landed an SST. Just let's say it's part of the personal service. Shadow Control, this is Seagull X-ray. Confirm arrival, Stevenson Base, Los Angeles, 0835. Takeoff schedule, 1100 hours. Roger, Seagull X-ray. Call Moon Base, will you? Yes, sir. Status check. Target? Affirmative. Magnetic field? Check. Saturation density? Green. Resonator? Affirmative. Code? OK. Displacements? Go. Filters? Check. Fluctuation? Affirmative. Reflex? Excuse me. Right. Shadow control for you, Lieutenant. Right. Lieutenant Ellis. Good morning, Gay. I think I might have some action for you. I want Moonbase put on yellow alert from 1045 to track Seagull X-ray. Now it's carrying shadow VIPs on the Utronic equipment. So let's keep everybody on their toes. 
Can't afford to take chances. Roger. Joan, announce a yellow alert for 10.45. Yes, Lieutenant. And complete the status check. I think this is going to be for real. I'm going to take a break. I'll be back about 10.30. OK. Moon base will be on yellow alert from 10.45 Earth elapsed time. Repeat, 10.45 EET. All space trackers to be fully operational by 10.45 EET. Astronauts to be on standby. Joanna? Be right with you, Lou. No hurry. I want to run a computer check on the interceptor systems in about 10 minutes. Hi, Gay. Hello, Lou. Do you think this could be it, Lieutenant? Looks like it, Lou. An SST traveling at Mach 4 is a pretty tempting target, particularly as it's carrying the new Utronic equipment. So, Mark. So this time it could be real? Yeah, it could be. Well, I guess we could all do with a bit of action. Well, I could do with a cup of coffee. Sure. Thanks. Put Skydiver in the picture. Yes, sir. from Shadow Control, sir. Yellow alert at 10.45. Right. At last entry. Did you send it? Yes, sir. A refueling schedule. Transmitted on security code B. Sorry, sir. How long you been with us, Ford? Just over two years, sir. Two years. Long enough to know how important security is to Shadow. Now look, this headquarters controlling moon base, the satellites, and a fleet of submarines is 80 feet below a film studio, right? Now, 400 people work up there, and not one of them knows all this exists. I have to play games, pretending to be the studio's chief executive. No one even dreams what my real function is. That's what security is all about. I'm sorry, sir. Sometimes it's pretty difficult. Difficult? So you think it's difficult, huh, Ford? Well, I'll tell you when it gets difficult. Have you ever thought about the victims of UFO incidents? Have you ever considered their parents, brothers, sisters? What do we tell them? They can never know the truth. So they live in agony for years, praying that someday their loved one may turn up, clinging to a thread of hope Don't ever tell me that security's difficult. Sometimes it gets pretty close to home. The yellow alert starts in two minutes, sir. Be right with you.
Stevenson Base, this is Seagull X-ray. Liftoff check complete. Liftoff clearance. Roger, Seagull X-ray. You are clear to go. Yeah. 10.45. Right. Brakes. Off. Airspeed building. 130. 140. 160 V1. VR. Rotate. This is Moon Base calling Sid. This is Space Intruder Detector. Pass your message. Seagull X ray carrying VIPs and neutronic equipment is airborne. Track progress of aircraft until further notice. Keep sharp lookout for UFO. Please pass your code so that your instructions can be complied with. Stand by to receive code. Standing by. Thank you. Your code is correct. I have Seagull X-ray on scanners. It is on course. Speed, 1500 knots. Moon base computers confirm course correct. Airspeed, 1500 knots. Right. Maintain tracking. Hide a place check complete, sir. Okay. Steer 042. Steer 042. 042. Maintain present speed. Maintain speed, 40 knots. Everything okay? Yes, sir. No sign of any activity. Good. Green. Speed. Solid. Trajectory termination. Coming up. This is Moon Base to Shadow Control. Predicted trajectory termination. North Atlantic. Speed. Solid. Going for intercept. Out. Interceptors. Immediate launch. Interceptors. Immediate launch. Let's go. Right. This is Moon Base to all shadow stations. Moon Base to all shadow stations. UFO sighted 428146 Green will report. Attention all defense systems. This is a maximum security alert. 
Attention all defense systems. I say again, this is a maximum security alert. Condition red. Interceptors one, two, and three. Moon based interceptors. Stand by to set this our control computer. Right. MCC reading one zero one two six four one one zero. Missile timing two four nine six. Missile program completed. Range eight million miles closing. Seven million miles. Missile firing five decimal four seconds. Skydiver. And get me Alec Freeman. Yes, sir. UFO entering visual speed range. Radar and visual alert. UFO on radar track speed Mach 5. Thank God for the atmosphere. It's the best protection we have. A positive radar fix. Well, it's up to skydiver now. In position, sir. Right. Five, Stand by. Four, three, two, one, zero. Launch stations. Launch stations. Clear one. One clear. Clear two. Two clear. Ready for takeoff, sir. Okay, lift off stations. Lift Check off boosters. stations. Checking boosters. Circuits. Cut boosters. H pulse circuits, okay. Cutting boosters. Relays, okay. Good, let's give her Interlocks engaged. Stabilize gyro. Trigger circuits, okay. Right. Stand by for lift off. Control from Sky One, airborne. Position zero two zero, red. Roger, Sky One. Airspeed down to six hundred knots. Right. Lower heat shield. Right.
I don't like it. These clouds give about as much cover as a G-string on a belly dancer. Sky one Seagull X-ray, over. Oh, Peter, am I glad to hear you. What's your position? Right above you. Level off at 20,000. Sky one to Seagull X-ray. Have you four on screen. Closing rapidly. Roger. 10 degrees port. Right. U4 at 12 o'clock. You are the target. Coming into attack. U4 at Cloud Lair. Keep a sharp lookout. Roger. One to shatter control. Reporting direct hit on UFO. It's gonna crash into the sea. Good shooting, Sky One. Come in, Seagull X ray. Alec, are you okay? I've aged about five years, but we're still in one piece. Hello, Sky One. Follow it down, Captain. Use your reconnaissance camera. Roger, will do. straight under. It seems to be breaking up. Hold it. There's a body. Please confirm. Did you say body? Yes, it's a body. and the other tracker stations will have the Utronic system fitted and operational within a week. Oh, that's just great. Oh, you look tired, Alec. Why don't you uh, help yourself to a drink? Thanks. I think I will. You never touch it, do you? Uh-uh. Self-control. Maybe drinking needs more self-control. When does, uh, it arrive? Any time now. We've waited a long time for this one. Yes. Ten years. It's been ten years since we had the first confirmed UFO landing on Earth. And that was after a decade of speculation, reports, official denials, you name it. You know, Alec, 
when I was made commander of Shadow. I thought it was all going to happen. You've done a good job. The best. Well, I've tried. But how far have we progressed? I mean, what do we really know about UFOs? What are they? Where do they come from? What do they want? Yes. Mayland Hospital, Shadow Section. Your special patient has arrived, sir. We will use Underground Corridor 32 to Shadow Medical Center. Right. Well, maybe some of the answers are coming in now. Well done, Peter. Thanks. You're wanted in debriefing immediately. Right. See you later. What's the position, Doctor? Alive and in a critical condition. Excuse me. What are the chances of survival? Well, he was equipped with an advanced apparatus that enabled him to breathe liquid. The helmet was removed as soon as he was picked up. An attempt was made to restore normal breathing. The problem is that there's still some liquid left in his lungs. So it's too early to say yet. Excuse me. Space travel in a liquid environment. The very thing we've been experimenting with. Yes. Well, apparently they've done it. I must ask you to leave now. Right. Let me know the moment you have anything, Doctor. Commander Straker. Is he alive, Doctor? Yes. Well? Well, the general analysis has shown that he's humanoid. You mean, like us? More or less. Body temperature, three degrees paranormal, blood pressure rather low, muscular development poor. The skin has an artificial green coloration, probably absorbed from the liquid. The interesting thing here is that the hair hasn't picked up this tint, which suggests that the liquid contains a bioacrophilic compound. Also, the fact that the eyes were protected by plastic shell seems to support this theory. Anyway, we'll know more when we get the computer readout from the first electromedical check. It'll be a few minutes. solar system probably a hundred million million miles from Earth. It's incredible. What is? Well, we can't be certain yet, but this preliminary test shows organ and gland transplants. Heart, liver, left lung, thyroid. Do you 
realize what this could mean, Alec? It's still theory. Theory? Fact. After almost ten years of possible, probable, and confirmed UFO incidents. Fact. On a number of fully documented occasions, mutilated bodies found after UFO attacks. Organs missing. Fact. An electromedical examination on the first alien we lay our hands on shows organ transplants. The doctors aren't certain. No, not yet. But I'm willing to bet that our proof lies at the end of that corridor. Intensive care unit. We have an emergency. I'm afraid he's dead. Mortem. 48 hours. Make it 24. Not the details. Just what really matters. The rapid aging isn't documented in the report. We're not sure why it happened, but it's certainly connected with the reaction of Earth's atmosphere on the body. Now, gentlemen, let's concern ourselves with the three main questions regarding UFOs. One, where do they come from? Now, the fact that the lungs were filled with an oxygenated liquid seems to indicate a subjection to phenomenal acceleration and fantastic speed over a long period long enough for the skin to pick up the green coloration of the liquid. Now, all this would appear to add up to an extended journey through space, perhaps several months, at many times the speed of light. Question number two, who are they? Well, obviously, in science and technology, several hundred years in advance of man. But everything in this report seems to add up to a dying race Hereditary sterility was evident. What, by using drugs and advanced transplant techniques, they could have found a way to stop the natural aging process. They are also highly intelligent, so they presumably come to Earth knowing the risk of contact with our atmosphere. Which brings us inevitably to question number three. Why do they come? This report indicates five major organ and gland transplants. In the case of the heart, tissue compatibility tests shows that it was human in origin. It came from Earth, gentlemen. Therefore, 
One of the reasons they must obviously come is to obtain organ replacements. But there may be other reasons. Imagine a dying planet in some distant corner of the universe. Its natural resources exhausted. Its inhabitants sterile. Doomed to extinction. Situation we may one day find ourselves in, gentlemen. So they discover Earth, abundant and fertile, able to satisfy their needs. They look upon us not with animosity, but with callousness, as we look upon our animals whom we depend on for food. Yes, it would appear they are driven by circumstance across a billion miles of space, driven on by the greatest force in the universe, survival. Yes, sir. There's no possible doubt? No, sir. Electronic tissue analysis is as positive as a voice print. Right. sister, isn't it? Yes. I'm afraid she's dead, Peter. There's no longer any doubt. I think you know how sorry I am. What happened? I don't think you'd like to know the details. I think I'd like to know. Your sister was last seen in the vicinity of a UFO incident nearly 10 years ago. The alien's body recovered from the sea was subjected to intense medical examination. The heart was a transplant. The donor was Leela Carlin. What will you tell your parents? I don't know. You realize, of course, that they can never know the truth. A funeral without a body. A symbol of human compassion. A long finger of tragic coincidence stretching across a billion miles of space. Is this the end or the beginning? Where does the universe end? Where does it begin?